Good morning, everyone. Please tell me if it's uh, too loud, not loud enough. Um, so welcome. Uh, this is the session about um, data quality and, um, and, and AI. Now, before I start introducing myself, um, I would like to know who you are. So if you uh, have a look in the Whova app on your phone, uh, you should get a pop-up asking you, who are you? It's um yeah, so th that's for me to sort of see who uh, you know who have in the audience. I do see a few people have already um, have already answered it. So in the category other, I wonder if you're in the room, and I do wonder we wh what is your role? Who are you? If you want to um, say that, please do. No, not in the room. All right. <coughs> so a lot of consultants, administrators, and um, even a few product owners in the room. So that's good. Welcome. Now a, a bit about myself. Uh, so I'm, I'm Andre. I have been in the e Salesforce ecosystem for for a few years. And um, you know, b besides doing uh, uh, being a consultant, I also organize some events, like for instance, what you see here, uh, your dreaming, which is French touch dreaming, but in uh, in Amsterdam and uh, in Brussels, Belgium and Holland. I also organize uh, ISV forum, Amsterdam user group, and um, and I can also call myself a Salesforce MVP since uh, about three years. That's so uh, always a nice sticker to have. Now, let's see what everyone has answered. All right. Lots of consultants and administrators. Cool. So you as the administrator, um, actually, th there's some spots here at the front if you, if you want to. So you as an administrator or consultant or your you're, you're customer, um, you probably look at this and go, what the hell is this? So these two people, that's, that's you and your team and your customer and you're on this journey and the journey is going to AI and also, of course, something with Salesforce. Because I, I can say a lot about AI, but this is really specifically about Salesforce, of course. Um, so for today, we have uh, you, the, you know, you're the hero of, uh, of today's story. There's Havokara, the, um, <laughs> the data chaos monster. So we're gonna have to beat that. And of course there's uh, AI and I'm there to, uh, to help you. Now this, <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. So uh, indeed, this is a mess. Let's assume this is your, um, your Salesforce org. It looks like this, this is all your data. It's scattered everywhere. It's really not all that well organized. You see a few stacks here, try to organize it, but still doesn't work. Can you imagine trying to report on this? Um, and create reports, dashboards, it probably will look good from, from the front, but in the end, it's uh, you, your users, your customers are going to find out that it's really shit, which means unhappy, um, unhappy results. And of course, user adoption will then, yeah, will just then go down the drain. <coughs> now, there's three, uh, three topics. Uh, so there's the AI in Salesforce, of course. Um, there's data chaos. I'll explain a bit what, uh, how I see data chaos besides the monster. And how do you fix it? So about AI, um, of course, th there's this whole hype. And I would say, just relax. You're not missing out. If you have any, any AI FOMO, please don't, because um, it's really only about the, yeah, the, the hype at the moment. Um, I know it's not a popular opinion. So a bit about the, the, the history of AI. The term was first actually used in 1950s, 1960s. I don't know the exact date, but this is for, for the millennials like myself, <laughs> this is not 20 years ago, <laughs> 40 years ago. This is a long time ago. And then of course, there's a, f there's a few more steps. Um, you know, there was, there was machine learning, there's some knowledge bases, uh, w which have, have been around forever. In, in the 2000s, there was also the you know, data explosion, so a ton of data suddenly was generated, and I think every day it's still getting more and more and more. 
Then, one thing we're all familiar with, spam filters, you know, recommendation systems like you know, Einstein uh, Next Steps, uh, for instance. <laughs> And then later on, you have the, you know, the, the, the voice recognition and, and that kind of stuff. And really recently, pretty much AI the way we know it today. So it's been a long journey. And all I want to say with this is it took AI very long to get to this, which means we can't expect from, from you, from your users, from your customers to also get to using AI to 400% in a few weeks. Now, there, there's a few, um, of course, th there's a lot of different types of AI. These are two sort of main categories, uh, analytical and, and generative. And of course, these days when we talk about AI, it's probably about generative AI. Um, you know, wi with analytics, of course, there's, uh, you, you see the, the, the you know, uh, predictions and a bit, a bit personalized, you know, maybe, maybe some chatbots, you know, uh, sorry, no. Um, but reporting on, on AI. And you have the generative stuff, that's, that's the, what we have these days. But what I find really important there is, so GPT, Generative Pre-Trained Transformers, that's what it stands for. The pre-trained part is the important part because um, GPT only does what, um, what you tell it to do, pretty much. So you give it a data set, and with that data set, um, <coughs> you determine a lot what, what the result's going to be. We'll talk about it a bit later. In Salesforce, you have uh, the, the, these are, I think, most of the GPT products. And this is just a highlight of, of the functionalities that, um, that are there per, per product. For instance, um, you know, this one I really like, Service GPT, you have the, the case summaries. Um, so you have, a, you have a case, you have a problem, solution, and some steps in between, and you can use um, yeah, service GPT to, to, to summarize that, which is very handy for the, yeah, to, to look back in the, in the future. The other thing you see there is the Salesforce Einstein AI, and I know it's in this list, but it's actually quite different to all the GPT things, because uh, as far as I know, GPT is only, uh, only for unlimited customers. So that's the unlimited license. Um, the, the, the Einstein AI is, is available for everyone, at least uh, enterprise and up. So that's good to know. And that's another reason why you might not be ready. Because uh, if you're an uh, enterprise edition customer, um, sometimes it's just, yeah, uh, unlimited is just not, not, a, not an option ever. So keep that in mind. Now the data chaos. So there's a monster again. I call it Havakara, you know, uh, creating havoc in, the, in, in your Salesforce org. Um, yes. <coughs> so how do you, how do you know uh, you have data chaos? So if you hear uh, from your users, from your colleagues, uh, from your customers, if you hear these type of questions and terms and remarks, that probably means there's something wrong. Um, and especially the, you know, the, the, the top one I've actually heard too often, Salesforce is the root of all evil. What they, of course, mean is the results coming out of it are not what I want, and this may, may, may be a management thing, um, but people importing or putting, in, uh, putting data in um, or entering data, they're also complaining, like, <laughs> I, I can't work with this. But then you have a problem with the tooling. Uh, you can also have a, pr a problem with the process or with behavior, and that's really not the tool itself, um, but of course the, you know, the, 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 the behavior of the people. Now, three problem areas uh, which, have, oh, which have six um, uh, solution areas. We'll get to that a bit later. If... Um, so I'm just skipping uh, quickly to, to sort of the solution. So what you see here is, is a data uh, quality framework. So to get to good data quality, you start at the top with profiling. And that's also analyzing what is wrong with my data. Because just assume your data, there's something wrong with it. It's never going to be 100% uh, accurate, 100% usable, uh, usable by AI. And wha what do I mean with profiling? For instance, you have, uh, say, your, your customers' accounts, contacts, they all have an address and phone number. And for instance, example, um, 
if you have a customer from, from Holland or the Netherlands or NL, there's three different names for, for one country. And um, yeah, Holland's not the only country that, that has confusing names like that. But everyone can usually put in their <coughs> own, um, yeah, th their own definition of a country. So you find that this is the you, you create a profile. All these uh, accounts, all these contacts have this problem. Then you you clean it, um, so you you fix it. Then of course you standardize it. And this order is quite important. Make sure you fix the problem first, and then um, and then work on your existing data set. Once you've done that, of course, you're going to bump into a few, uh, few duplicates, so you match and merge. When you're done, that, uh, done with that, you, you do some monitoring just to make sure that it's actually the, the, the solution you have actually works. And then you start with profiling the next uh, problem, so to say. Now, talk a bit about data entry, but also the data in, in your, your environment. Um, this, I think, is a really interesting one. 30% of, of uh, your customer data will decay within a year, which means um, a contact, for instance, they might, uh, they might change uh, title, address, uh, company, um, or just you don't want to do business with them anymore. So that means if three years, um, if you don't do anything with data quality for, customer, uh, yeah, for your customers, three years, most of your data is going to be useless according to this statistic. I did not make this up. <laughs> um, and of course, there's also integrations that uh, might mess up your data. Now, how do we fix this? So we're ready for, for AI. There's a few things. Um, these slides will be, uh, will be posted. And of course, there's also the recording. Have a look at this. And then, uh, for instance, what you see here, information strategy per block can probably talk for two hours. I'm not going to do that today. But what you see here, so these are 12 building blocks of your, your information strategy. Well, one of the blocks is AI. Uh, and of course, you have the, your data quality here. You have your, your master data management here. Um, so these are all important blocks. Only showing it to, to um, uh, so, so you can see it's all, all related. Don't only focus on one thing. Now. Diving into the, the, the AI, so there you can also have a, well, should also have a strategy for it, which can consists of you know th these four four areas. Of course, you know ha have a, have a vision. What what do you actually want to do with it? Are you using AI, or do you want to use AI because the rest of the world does it, or do you actually have a good business case for it? As a consultant, please ask your customers this. As an administrator, ask your product owner, manager this, and it might cause a fight, but it's a very good question. Um, and then, of course, maybe together with, with them and all the stakeholders, have a look at the risks. And once you've done all that, uh, what, what's the added value? Then you can start working on the adoption. Um, so you have, of course, the adoption of, of Salesforce, but then also the AI uh, tooling in it. And then, of course, you also have the, um, yeah, the, 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 the the behavior part. You know, all the way in the beginning, I showed you the, the three problem areas. So these are the six solution uh, areas. So, m yeah, also make sure that the, the processes, you know, first of all, the process actually supports everything you want to, uh, to reach, your AI goals. Of course, make sure the technology, like Salesforce, is, is uh, designed correctly. You have the right licenses. Share the knowledge. And this, this is not setting out a, a one page, right? This is what AI does. Actually train people and keep doing that. Communicate that, so that's a bit of uh, internal positive marketing. Work with change managers on the behavior of, of, of people, because if, if you have good data, good system, and people still don't see the added value, they're not going to use it. So a waste of your, um, the wee waste of your, your investment. <coughs> and the last one, responsibilities. Which is also quite important because, um, as you see here, for instance, a data scientist or a data steward or data person, uh, I hope I'm not offending anyone here, by the way, <laughs> um, they have a lot of responsibilities. And it can be one person, it can be an entire team, you know, it can be part of like a, a center of excellence, for instance. But I would say make sure that uh, all or most of these responsibilities you've covered somewhere 
um, in a team or in a person. And there could be a few, let's say, well, easy things. So you have the data collection, uh, analyze the data, um, train your model, um, so that actually the model actually knows what, what, what to do with it. And of course, mon monitoring. This is one step that's not, not just AI, but any project is often forgotten uh, or not budgeted for, please do. Um, and of course, with, with AI, AI, you also have the ethical uh, considerations. Make sure what you do is also un unbiased, doesn't discriminate for, for whatever um, group of data. Yes, that. <laughs> Um, and then, um, of course, once you've actually fixed the, the, the problems, once you've automated uh, some of the processes, uh, addressed the problems, that means from that point on, your, your new data will uh, follow the, you know, the, the best practices or, or whatever you told it to do. But after that, you can start fixing your existing, uh, your existing data and processes. There's a few tools that can help you with that. So of course, uh, within Salesforce, you have uh, you have some reports and dashboards. Um, you can also set up some <coughs> some alerts. You know, if, if uh, you see there's a mistake that's quite often made, have um, have alerts popping up. Like you know, you have the duplicate rules and uh, s some other flows you can you can launch if uh, someone is about to make a mistake. Of course, there's the the built-in merge tool for for uh, duplicate records. But then, and this is where I think is, is the cool thing, uh, the, the epic change uh, side. So there's ISV partners out there, of course, that, that make uh, several products. I only highlighted three here. There's a lot more, really a lot. There's also um, Delphine Pipe Launch are also, uh, also uh, here. That's not why they're here, but it's just <laughs> um, I just also like the products. So with Delphi, you know, you can actually analyze your data quality. So um, that means the, the, uh, they, they have dashboards and reports uh, to actually show you per, uh, per tool, part of the process, or um, uh, per object, what is the quality. And of course, you can fine tune that. And pretty much that, that, that cycle I showed you before, you can use their tool to, to start to do the monitoring, the profiling bit. Pipe launch, um, so that's for data enrichment, and this one in particular is to connect uh, your Salesforce, like uh, especially contacts and accounts, with um, with external databases where there's a lot more um, a lot more data known of about these companies, and that will then just be imported in, in Salesforce, which of course helps. And once you when you do actually have duplicates, Plouty can uh, can help you with uh, with that. This duplicate check is a lot more advanced than the, the merge tool from, uh, from Salesforce. <coughs> and what I want to say, don't forget, of course, it's all about user adoption, and a user could be um, anyone, any stakeholder. This should actually be stakeholder adoption. Anyone who works with Salesforce or the results from Salesforce and AI, they have to be happy. And of course, do not do this by yourself. It's definitely a team effort, because uh, as you can see, all, all, the, all the tools and the responsibilities, you really don't want to do that by yourself. Um, if someone tells you that, not saying punch them in the face, but maybe ask them, why do you think this? So just a quick summary. So it's the same journey again, but you have this uh, information strategy here, you have the AI strategy, then you have the data quality uh, framework, you have your uh, user adoption change management um, framework, and that's all to get to the uh, to AI in in Salesforce. So that's all I wanted to say. I did see there's there's a few questions. Is there anything? Well, does anyone have any questions or anything I have not covered that you did already ask in the Whova app? Anyone? Can I trust AI with my data? Uh, 
That's a really good question. Can you, can you trust um, AI, AI with your data? And um, I would say that's a question for Salesforce. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, but it, it is a very good question. I really don't have the answer to that. Uh, of course, Salesforce, they, they have this, um, this, this uh, was it the, the security uh, layer? Trust layer. Thanks. <laughs> um, probably depends on how, how you look at it and, and, and the safety uh, and, and privacy stands you have in, in your company. For most, most that trust layer will be, will be sufficient, but I can also imagine for some, they're like, no, we're, we're definitely not doing this. These are the same companies that um, don't use Google Drive, for instance. Uh, you know, th th sometimes it's just AI is just not for you, for your company, for your department at the moment. Because and and you saw, you know, the it, it started in the 50s. We're now 2023. At some point, it will probably be for everyone, but not right now. So, we have three more minutes. Yeah, no, that, that, that's new. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, good, good addition. Uh, so Salesforce does have the, the zero uh, data retention yeah. policy. That's yeah. Um, so for Salesforce, yeah, you're good. But indeed, in uh, in, in the journey from your Salesforce environment through the trust layer and back, what what, what happens there? I mean, there's there, there's hackers and, and and stuff everywhere and every you know. Um, so don't always assume it's 100% safe, but it also really depends on uh, what you do about it. And this sounds really bad, but <laughs> that's <laughs> it's not al always as positive as um, AI <laughs> providers will uh, want you to believe. I have a comment. I think uh, most of everyone here who are coming to, to this uh, meeting, I think the uh, objective, what we want to achieve mainly about how my organization can use this AI, right? And then we know we collected so many information in, in, in our system. Uh, and, and, and I totally agree with what uh, you said just now. Uh, we, everything, uh, it, ha it has to, it need to come together as a team. You cannot just promote this by, well, your salespeople say, ah, I don't want to do all this data cleaning. And data cleaning is the most important part. And again, we have to question now which part of the business that we think that we want to use the AI. We collected so many information. Uh, I think we don't need to focus, for example, on telephone number, email address, all this kind of information that we don't want. But we need to focus on information like, oh, what is the SKU? What is the color of the product? What? So we need to identify what are the important that we need to collect. And these are the area we need to get to the sales team, get them clean up the mess. Otherwise, we have <laughs> tons of uh, rubbish in and rubbish out. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Yeah, for for that addition, and that's indeed what what wanted to to uh, well trying to achieve with this model as well. What is your goal? What what is work your company's goal? Your um, what, what's the added value? And based on that, indeed, start choosing the tools and the, and the functionalities and the products, and then start cleaning your data. So indeed, I probably showed it the other way around, but yes, what you said. <laughs> All right. I think we have time for one more question. Yes. Uh, what I find difficult is when different teams own different parts of the data. So you have lots of different stakeholders. So as like a, the Salesforce team or the architect, how do you ensure that, like how do you work with all of the different teams and ensure that there's one vision for the data and that it's not just siloed across the Good question. So in, indeed, uh, the, uh, what you have, here. No, 
I can't find it. But so uh, th there's indeed all the responsibilities of the, the data scientist and the data steward. Especially the data steward will be the person to go over the different departments and silos and, and everything to then make sure everyone's doing the same thing and they're all they're all synchronized or in, in line. Um, so th that, that's really um, and it could be an external person as well, uh, but they coordinate everything. So they're not a data entry person. They're coordinating. All right, thank you. We're um, one minute over time. Thank you so much. <laughs>